Hey everybody, this is Walter with Access Electric and today I'm here with Bobby Carrillo and we're going to be going over how to program an Allen Bradley VFD. We're going to go through each parameters, uh, some of the most common parameters. Yep, the most basic ones, the ones you get right off of the motor nameplate. Um, it's the 520 series VFDs that we're going to program. Yeah, so we'll go over the 520 20 series VFD, we'll go over the motor nameplate and we'll find out how those translate into programming the each parameter in our drive. All right. All right, let's get started. Let's go. All right, so. So um, first thing we need is what, probably the language? What yeah, language are we yeah. speaking? Well, let's start <laughs> with that one. Uh, if we go here to the drive and P30 is the first uh, parameter in the P series. Um, and one is default and that is English. English. So yeah, we can go ahead and leave that as is. Default is always yeah. that, so. Yeah, we better do it in English. I won't yeah. know how to do it anywhere. <laughs> exactly, in exactly. All right, then we need to find, what's the voltage of the system? Okay. So is this if this motor is 480 volt, so let's go ahead and set parameter 31. Okay and motor nameplate volts. As you see on the 520 series drives and the 750 series drives, um, if you go to a parameter and you wait a few seconds, what the parameter is and, and uh, the options for it actually scroll across the screen here, you can see that. So if you see here P31, motor nameplate volts, you hit enter, uh, you can select um, what the voltage is for that motor. So we'll go ahead and leave it at 230 for now. Um, that'll work for sure. this demo. All right. Okay. Then we'll uh, the uh, the hertz of the motor. Okay. The frequency. Yep. This is a sixty hertz motor. It says so right there. So let's go up to P thirty two, and it's already set to sixty. That's usually uh, that's the default. That's the default. It is. So we're good there. All right. Now we need to think about the overload settings of the motor. Okay. So if we go here to the next setting up, which is P thirty three. Um, this drive was set up for 3.5, but if you look at the motor nameplate data, uh, this is the one with the service factor included, or this... This is the one with the service factor, yeah. Correct. So the drive, or the amperage, full load amps for this motor is 1.1. The service factor is 1.35, so if you multiply the two together, uh, you come up with 1.5. It's 1.48, but we'll go ahead and round up to 1.5. So we go here. Uh, select and we can go down to 1.5 and there we go all right so that is set so p34 p34 that'll be the full load amps of the motor full load amps and that's taken right off of the the motor with no service factor included this one is 1.1 so we can select that and set it for 1.1 all right, now uh, the RPMs of the motor? RPMs, okay. So this is a 1725 motor. So that's parameter... 36. 36. So we go here, 1750. We can go ahead and set it to 1725 uh, to make sure we match the uh, motor nameplate data. Yeah, we're almost there. There we go. Okay. All right, now we probably need to think about uh, the Excel time. So the start time. Okay. So this, the XL time, which is 41. P41. Um, this is how long it's going to take the motor to get up to speed. So you can set it anywhere from zero to 600 seconds. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and set this one to uh, two seconds. Okay. There we go. And, that's, and the default, I think, was 10? Yes, it was 10. Yeah, before we started messing around with it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll set the acceleration time to two seconds, and that's how fast it'll get up to frequency. Um, okay. That's how long it'll take. Great, and then the parameter 42 would be their decel time. Okay, so let's go up to that, P42, and that is default 10 seconds. Uh, we'll just leave it there for now, that's, that's fine. Um, but that's not gonna hurt anybody. Okay, so parameter 43 would be our minimum frequency. Okay. So the slowest you want the motor to go before you can't go any slower. Correct. And again, that's go all the way down to zero for that. Um, typically, you don't want to run a, a VFD slower than 10. Some applications may require it, and you can do that with specific motors. Um, but for the most part, you know, 10 hertz is, you're pushing it with 10 hertz. So we try not to go below that. And that's, you know, that's pretty slow. 
That's pretty slow. Yeah. All right, then we have our... Max Hertz. The Max Hertz, right. Max Hertz, the fastest we want the motor to go. Mm -hmm. And you can hurt a motor just as much by running it too fast as too slow. So you want to make sure that nobody can, if it is a uh, keypad control or pot, that they can't go too um, high and damage the motor. So, and not just the motor, but it also can uh, cause some problems with the application mm -hmm. um, of where it's at. So you got to be careful with that. So we'll set it to 70. Yeah, we typically leave it at 60 uh, okay. for the max, but it kind of depends on the application. Exactly. Okay. All right. Now um, the uh, stop mode. Uh, we're going to go to full and go to we'll P46. Stop, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll look at the... So we're going to go to the start source. Mm -hmm. So on these drives, are, they can have multiple start sources, right? They can have um, two-wire start, three-wire start. Correct. They... Um, if you look under the, the cover here, um, there's a couple of ports here, and this is the 525. Um, and I have it connected right now to this managed switch, um, and it's going to the Ethernet IP port. But there's also a serial port here for a different type of communication. And if you um, go to P46 and let it scroll, this is the start source. So it can be number one is the keypad where you push the green button and it'll run. Um, number two is a digital input on the terminal block here. So if it gets a run command from a hardwired source, that's how that's what you would set it to. Um, three is a serial. Um, DSI connection and that's this port here uh, it's just another type of communication and actually number five is the one we want to look at it's coming from the Ethernet IP so this Ethernet IP is connected to the switch which also goes to the PLC PLC is talking through the switch to this drive so we're gonna get the start command set it to number five um, to get it from the, the PLC so we'll hit enter there set it to five and we're good to go on that all right then we have a uh... Our speed reference. Uh, speed reference is, um, it tells you, it sets the drive as to where it's going to get, how fast it's going to go. Right. Um, so it could be a potentiometer. It could be a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. Exactly. It could be a, a 0, zero to 10, 10 volt signal. Perfect. Exactly. Um, but we're going to go ahead and set it to 15, which is Ethernet IP again. So we're going to let the PLC control the, the start command and the speed. Absolutely. It's all coming from there. So we hit enter to 15, and there we go. So if this was um, a defaulted drive, brand new drive, uh, you'd also have to set, if we're putting it into the industrial network, um, the IP address for this drive. If you don't have automatic device configuration, we'll talk about that later. Um, but if you don't, then you'll have to set the IP address on this. And those parameters are in the uh, C um, program group. And C129 is the first octet of your IP address. 192 okay. typically is, you know, it's pretty common. So like 192, 168.0.1 or whatever it is. Exactly. So 192 for this drive is the first set. Um, the second set, which is C130, is 168. Um, the third set, 131, is set to 1. And this drive specific um, IP address ends with 10. Okay, so it's so, 192.168.0, no, dot one, dot one, dot one. Dot 10. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and those are the four places that you set all four of those. C129, 130, 131, and 132. Okay. okay. So basically, this drive is ready to go. It is. Um, the other thing we need to probably talk about, though, since we have a managed switch here, is automatic device configuration. And what that allows is whenever this drive fails, if it fails, um, anybody... Any maintenance person, anybody that you have uh, authorized in your facility to change a drive out can do it without any prior knowledge of the parameters or settings or even knowledge of a PLC. All they have to do is put in a new drive and the automatic device configuration will take over completely. So will the PLC recognize that a new drive has been installed? Correct. It'll, it'll recognize that a defaulted drive has been installed. It doesn't have the right parameters. Uh, the first thing that happens is a switch realizes that the VFD doesn't have the proper IP address that assigns the proper IP address, reboots it. Once the PLC sees that it has the proper IP address, it'll download the parameters automatically. So you don't have to get online with the program, you don't have to touch the drive other than just wiring up the power to it. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. As we saw, this, is, this drive is programmed. So what I can do is I can default the drive with parameter P46. 
key 53, hit enter, and go to 2, hit enter. This drive is now completely fault, uh, defaulted. Uh, and I'll tell you here, parameters defaulted. So it goes back to factory default. Correct. Um, so we can verify that by, because uh, previously in this, in this video, we saw that C129, um, 130, 131, 132 had the IP address that had been programmed into it. Right. And now uh, you see that it's set to zero. Okay. P131, 0, 30, 0, 29, 0. Okay. So this drive is completely fault, uh, defaulted. So that's, that's what would happen with a drive that failed. Um, you get the fault, drives on, uh, inoperable. So you bring out a new one, install it, power it down, um, power it down, remove it, put in the new one. Um, <laughs> you know, I probably want to kill power first before you unlock it. Lock out, tag out. Pull exactly. it out, Safety put first. the new one in, <laughs> exactly. remove your locks. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so as we know, this was, this was uh, defaulted. So follow all the safety procedures and then turn the drive back on. And the first thing that's going to happen is that the switch is going to realize that this doesn't have the proper IP address. As soon as it starts communicating here, it'll realize that. And what's going to happen is the drive is going to reboot with the proper IP address. It takes about three minutes total from when you power up a new drive for this whole process to happen. Right. Yeah. Um, it's a huge saver of downtime, especially if... So three minutes from a failed dr uh, drive. Once you have the new one once installed. Once you have the new one installed. And powered and up. Powered up. And the switch sees that it, yeah. it needs to assign it an IP address. And then it's about three minutes to get it configured and back up and running. Correct. As we see here, it's what starting... A time saver. Yeah. It's starting to communicate now. And... It just realized that it didn't have the right IP address. It assigned the IP address and rebooted the drive automatically. Now when this reboots, the PLC is going to say, okay, I see a drive out there, has the appropriate IP address, but it doesn't have the proper settings. And it'll download the settings to it. Excellent. And we'll be able to go back in and verify that the IP address was set. The settings that were saved in the PLC will also be pushed in. Another good feature of this is that the firmware version will also be set. It does extend the process a little bit longer. It does take a little bit longer to do the firmware, but whatever firmware was saved in the PLC for this specific drive, it'll inst automatically it'll install flash the firmware. It back onto that it'll drive. flash the firmware, yeah. That's amazing. So that, I can see that's a benefit for a lot of different reasons. Uh, the main one is downtime. Correct. Getting up, back up as quickly as possible. But I see another big benefit is um, human error. Uh, somebody else comes back, they program that drive, but it's not programmed the same way, at the same speeds, with the same minimums, the same maximums. If all those parameters weren't documented, and if those documents have been lost, mm -hmm. uh, then that person's kind of guessing what those parameters were. Exactly. Or they uh, have to go out to the motor physically and read the motor nameplate data and start from scratch. Right. Yeah. So as long as you have a managed switch... A Compactor Control Logics PLC and a PowerFlex uh, 520 or 750 series drive, this is possible. Um, so if we look now, uh, we look at this drive, it's already been rebooting. Um, so if we go check the parameters that we had set for uh, the IP address here, you can see that it's set properly. 192, 168, 1, and 10. So you're up and running. You're up and running yeah, that well, fast. Just that quickly. Um, again, no knowledge of VFDs, no knowledge of PLCs. Um, of course, when do these things fail? Two o'clock in the morning. You know, <laughs> the worst time possible. Exactly. <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning, Christmas Eve, right? Nobody's there, but you have somebody that can actually safely remove it and install a new one. Everything's done for him. So that's a really good feature of these drives. That's great. So if you find these uh, videos to be helpful, please uh, press on the uh, like button and hit subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this. And uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Thank you.